This keyboard has one of the craziest RGB you will find and I'll be modding it to make it sound really good. And the best part is that it's very affordable. I'll show you how I made it sound so good, but first let me tell you more about the keyboard itself. By the way, huge thanks to Banggood.com for providing the keyboard for this video. This is the Gamakai K61 mechanical keyboard. It has some interesting features, so let's see if it's worth the $60 itself for. It only comes in white, which makes a lot of sense, as the white really highlights all the RGB LEDs. These LEDs are diffused by the frosted acrylic case, and it has a hot swappable PCB, so you can easily try new mechanical switches without needing to solder. The K61 comes in a 60% form factor, so it doesn't have any arrow or function keys reducing its overall footprint and freeing up the space for your mouse. The case is made using three layers of acrylic. The top one works as the keyboard plate, which holds the switches in place. The middle layer surrounds the PCB, and the bottom one sandwiches the PCB between the top and bottom layer. You can see that there are some rubber feet on the bottom that give the K61 a fixed typing angle. In addition, the screws holding together the three different layers are visible from the bottom, keeping the top clean. I really like how the frosted acrylic case looks. It does a great job at diffusing the lighting and it's precisely cut to shape so there aren't any rough edges. However, since the case is acrylic, there's naturally going to be a noticeable amount of keyboard flex and the build quality isn't the best, but at this price point I don't really mind. In fact, the flex and the sandwich mounting style inspired me to do one of the mods that made it go from something like this to this. I'll show you what I did in a minute, but let's see what else the keyboard has to offer. Sandwich in between the three acrylic layers sits the white hot swappable PCB. That makes a lot of sense as it blends in very well with the frosted acrylic. Just imagine how bad it would look if they used a blue or green PCB. On the top right corner you will find the USB-C port. Once you plug it in, you can see that every single key is individually backlit and it supports 5-pin PCB mounted switches, which is a nice feature as it allows you to use both PCB and plate mounted switches. However, the LEDs are north facing, so there will be keycap interference in the middle rows if you use cherry profile keycaps. This means that the plastic housing of the mechanical switch will interfere with the keycap before it bottoms out, making the keys feel mushier and sound worse. Keep this in mind if you plan on replacing the stock keycaps. Talking about LEDs, there are many of them on the bottom of the PCB, that create a really sweet underglow which I personally really like. All the LEDs can be controlled separately by pressing function plus left or right control and there are a lot of lighting effects, but I personally like to keep it static so it's less distracting. The hot swap feature is definitely nice to have, especially at this price point, making it easy for you to mod your keyboard and try new switches without needing to solder. I personally really like it as it saves a lot of time when modding a keyboard and changing switches is very quickly, very, very quick, very quick. As for the switches, the K61 offers a selection of Gacheron switches, including black, blue, brown, red, and yellow. Black, red, and yellow are linear, typically preferred for gaming. Browns for typing, and blues will make everyone around you hate you, so make everyone a favor and don't buy blues. These Gatron switches are decent starter switches, and I would recommend getting the Gatron yellows as they are one of the better budget switches out there, but you can always take them out and try new ones at any time since the keyboard has hot swap PCB. I got Gatron browns here because the yellows were out of stock. They are a very light tactile switch that will get the job done, but I decided to take advantage of the hot swap feature and use some nicer switches to make it sound and feel a bit better. The stabilizers in this keyboard are lightly factory looped and plate mounted, but they rattle quite a bit and are very loosely mounted, which makes it even louder. I'd heavily recommend whoa, I'd, <laughs> I'd heavily recommend you spend a few minutes tuning them to remove the rattling noises. In this video here, I built a keyboard for MKBHD and I show you how to mod a keyboard step by step, so feel free to check it out. I still can't believe Marquez commented and is using the keyboard I built him. Which uses haptics and a suit. I'm working on a follow up video where I'm building him one of the. Uh, blah, blah, blah. I'm, <laughs> where I'm building him one of the world's most luxurious mechanical keyboards. So make sure to subscribe so you don't miss it. 
It's going to be amazing. I can't wait to share all of the details with you. It's coming very, very soon. Moving on to the keycaps, they are double shot ABS, have pretty clean legends and the backlight shines evenly through the entire keycap. It would be nice if they were PVT as ABS tends to shine faster, but it's not a big deal. They are standard 60% layout keycaps, so you won't have any issues, issues, e I don't know how to say it, issues finding replacement keycaps if you want to swap them out sometime in the future. Just keep in mind what I said earlier about the north facing LEDs and keycap and keycap. Blah, blah, blah and keycap interference with cherry profile keycaps. The main selling point is the crazy RGB, a feature you might like. I personally really like it as it's quite, it's quite well implemented and the onboard effects are more than good enough in my opinion. Overall, I think this keyboard is absolutely worth the $60 it sells for. It does many things right and doesn't have any major issues, 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 and it doesn't have any major issues considering the price. But let's mod it and see how good we can make it. Here are three mods that will take this keyboard to the next level. First, we are going to remove the rattling noises coming from the stabilizers. This happens because the stabilizer wire moves too much inside the stabilizer housing. And in this case, there's even more rattle because the stabilizer housings are loose and not properly secured to the plate. So we will fix that too. To mod them properly, we need to remove the stabilizers and take them apart. Once they are out, we need to clip the legs on the stabilizer stems that avoid them from making an even bottom out. We are going to loop the stabilizers housings using Crytox 205 grade 0 to make them smoother. To prevent the wire from moving around and causing the rotten noises, we need to apply an even amount of dielectric grease or Crytox 205 grade 0 loop to the wire without obstructing its movement. Don't overdo this, it's easy to add more a bit later but removing it will be more complicated. Do it for one side of a wire and put back the stabilizer together. Then move on to the other side and repeat for the rest. Next, cut a bandit into small pieces and stick them on the plate to prevent the housing from moving around. After you do it for all the stabilizers, you can put them back on the keyboard and see if there's any rattle left. If there isn't, then it's good, but if there's rattle, you can try adding a bit more loop or dielectric grease. Also, let's take advantage of the hot swap feature. You can loop the stock switches that come with your board or try new and better switches like I'm doing for this video. I'll be using some looped mode signal tactile switches in this case. And now time to do the final mode that will make the biggest difference to the sound and feel. I added some foam between the top and midi layers to sort of simulate a gasket mount keyboard. By doing this, the typing experience will feel softer in addition to sounding better and more even across the board. I tried different amounts and types of foam to see what works best and ended up using white foam because it looks the cleanest as the frosted acrylic is sort of see-through. My recommendation is to place two pieces of foam on each side and four pieces of foam in the top and bottom to avoid it from flexing too much. I initially just used one piece of foam in the middle but it flexed way too much, so I added some more. Also, I didn't use all the screws when putting the keyboard back together. I used the four corner screws and the two center screws tightened halfway to avoid compressing the foam too much, which will defeat the purpose of doing this mod in the first place. Time for the sound test. Let's see how long I can survive in this typing game. Let's go. Thank you. 